Africa, a land of giants. From the towering giraffe to the mighty elephant, this continent is home to some of the most impressive megafauna on the planet. But this is only a fraction of what once roamed here. Today, Africa is the last stronghold of the world's great land mammals. But during the Pleistocene, a time spanning over 2.5 million years, this land was teeming with even more incredible creatures. Giant relatives of modern rhinos, fearsome predators unlike anything we see today, and behemoths that rivaled even the largest elephants. Many of these animals vanished in the blink of an eye, leaving behind only their fossils and the distant echoes of their time. What led to their disappearance? Climate change? Human activity? Or something else? In today's video, we're stepping back into the Pleistocene to uncover the lost giants of Africa, creatures that once ruled this continent, from massive mountain bears to bizarre, oversized relatives of animals we know today. So what did Africa's prehistoric megafauna look like? And what can their extinction teach us about the world we live in today? Let's dive in and find out. The Atlas Bear. The Atlas Bear was the only known species of bear native to Africa in historical times. It was a subspecies of the Eurasian brown bear whose ancestors migrated south during the Pleistocene epoch. They once roamed the rugged forests and mountainous regions of North Africa, particularly the Atlas Mountains, which stretch across present-day Morocco, Algeria and Tunisia. The Atlas bear was smaller than most Eurasian and North American brown bears, but it was still a powerful predator. It measured around 2.7 meters, 9 feet in length, and likely weighed up to 500 kilograms, 1,100 pounds. Unlike other brown bears, it had a shorter, stockier build, well adapted to navigating rocky, mountainous terrain. Its fur was thick and dark brown to black, with a lighter reddish-brown underside. Some historical accounts mention white markings on its muzzle and chest, but this is uncertain due to the lack of preserved specimens. Unlike the more omnivorous diet of modern brown bears, the Atlas bear may have been more reliant on plant material, though it likely scavenged or preyed on small animals when possible. The Atlas bear inhabited the dense oak and cedar forests of the Atlas Mountains, where it had access to a mix of plant life, small game and seasonal fruits. It likely followed a solitary lifestyle, similar to other bears, and would have foraged across large areas. Its thick fur suggests it was well adapted to the colder temperatures of the mountains, though it may have descended to lower elevations in winter. Historical accounts suggest that Atlas bears were not particularly aggressive unless threatened. Unlike the massive grizzlies or Kamchatka brown bears of today, they were smaller and possibly less dominant in their ecosystems. Their primary threats came not from other predators, but from humans. The decline of the Atlas bear was a direct result of human activity. By the time of the Roman Empire, the species was already in serious trouble. The Romans frequently captured these bears for use in gladiatorial games, where they were pitted against humans and other animals in brutal spectacles. As civilizations expanded across North Africa, habitat destruction and hunting further reduced their numbers. With its population fragmented and declining, the Atlas bear was gradually pushed toward extinction. The last confirmed reports of the Atlas bear date to the late 1800s, and it is believed to have gone extinct by the mid to late 19th century. Paleoloxodon recchi Paleoloxodon recchi was one of the largest elephants to ever walk the earth. A close relative of modern African and Asian elephants, this species thrived in Africa for over a million years before vanishing around 300,000 to 100,000 years ago. Paleoloxodon recchi belonged to the Paleoloxodon genus, commonly known as the straight-tusked elephants. However, this species was significantly larger than any elephant alive today. The largest individuals stood up to 4.5 meters, 15 feet tall at the shoulder, taller than an African elephant and rivaling even the colossal steppe mammoth. Estimates suggest it could weigh up to 15 metric tons, 33,000 pounds, making it one of the heaviest land mammals in history. Its most distinctive feature was its long straight tusks, which could grow over four meters, 13 feet in length. 
These tusks were less curved than those of modern elephants and were likely used for defense, foraging and competition between males. This giant elephant had a robust build with powerful legs adapted to support its immense weight. It also had a large domed skull, similar to other Paleoloxodon species. Paleoloxodon reki was a grazer, meaning it primarily fed on grasses, much like modern African savanna elephants. Fossil evidence suggests it thrived in the open grasslands, savannas and shrublands of Africa, particularly in regions that are now Ethiopia, Kenya and Tanzania. It likely lived in herds, much like modern elephants, with strong social bonds and cooperative group behaviours. These herds would have been crucial for protection against predators, particularly large carnivores like saber-toothed cats, early lions and giant hyenas. With its immense size, P. Reki had few natural predators once fully grown, but young or weakened individuals could have been vulnerable. Like modern elephants, it likely played a key role in shaping its environment, trampling vegetation, digging for water, and dispersing seeds through its dung. Paleoloxodon reki thrived for over a million years, but its decline was linked to climate change and competition. As Africa underwent environmental shifts between 400,000 and 100,000 years ago, many grasslands gave way to more arid landscapes. This likely reduced the food supply for P. reki, making survival more difficult. As Paleoloxodon reki disappeared, its ecological niche was gradually taken over by Loxodonta africana, the modern African elephant. These smaller, more adaptable elephants may have had an advantage in changing environments. By around 100,000 years ago, Paleoloxodon reki had vanished, leaving behind only fossils as evidence of the giants that once dominated Africa's landscapes. The giant short-faced hyena. Among the most formidable predators of the Pleistocene was the giant short-faced hyena, Pachycrocuta brevirostris. Towering over modern hyenas, this massive carnivore was a dominant scavenger and predator that once roamed across Africa, Eurasia, and even parts of China and Europe before its extinction around 400,000 years ago. Pachycrocuta brevirostris, significantly bigger and more powerful than today's spotted hyena, Crocuta crocuta. It stood about 1 meter, 3.3 feet at the shoulder, and could weigh up to 150 kilograms, 330 pounds, with some estimates suggesting even larger individuals. This made it about twice as heavy as modern spotted hyenas. It had a massive skull and powerful jaw muscles, built for crushing bones with extreme efficiency. Its bite force was likely stronger than that of a modern lion, allowing it to break open large bones to access nutrient-rich marrow. As its name suggests, P. brevirostris had a shorter snout compared to modern hyenas, this feature likely increased its bite strength, making it an even more effective scavenger. Unlike modern hyenas, which are built for endurance running, the giant short-faced hyena had shorter, stockier limbs, suggesting it was not a pursuit predator, but rather a powerful scavenger that relied on sheer strength to dominate carcasses. Pachycrocuta brevirostris thrived in a wide range of environments, from African savannas to Eurasian open plains and woodlands. It coexisted with other large predators, including saber-toothed cats, Megantherion, and early lions. Unlike today's spotted hyenas, which hunt frequently, P. brevirostris was likely more of a specialized scavenger. Its powerful jaws were ideal for cracking open the bones of large animals, and fossil evidence suggests it frequently fed on the remains of elephants, rhinos, and other megafauna left behind by other predators. While it wasn't built for long chases, it may have ambushed weak or injured prey, relying on brute strength to overpower them. Some researchers believe P. brevirostris may have been a solitary scavenger, competing with early humans and other large carnivores for food. However, Others suggest it may have lived in small family groups, much like modern hyenas, working together to defend food sources from rival predators. Pachycrocuta brevirostris thrived for nearly two million years, but it disappeared around 400,000 years ago. Several factors likely contributed to its extinction. As the Pleistocene progressed, 
Populations of giant herbivores such as Paleoloxodon reci and other large mammals began to decline due to climate shifts. This meant fewer large carcasses for P. brevirostris to scavenge, reducing its primary food source. During this time, early humans, Homo erectus and later Homo sapiens, were becoming more efficient hunters and scavengers, directly competing with P. brevirostris for food. Early humans may have even killed hyenas that got too close to their kills. As the giant short-faced hyena declined, its niche was gradually taken over by smaller, more versatile hyena species, such as the modern spotted hyena, which is faster, more social, and capable of both scavenging and hunting effectively. By 400,000 years ago, the once dominant P. brevirostris had vanished, leaving its smaller, more adaptable relatives to carry on the hyena lineage. Today, its closest living relative is the spotted hyena, which, while still powerful, is nowhere near the size of its prehistoric ancestor. Hippopotamus gorgops. Long before modern hippos dominated Africa's rivers and lakes, an even larger and more formidable species roamed the waterways. Hippopotamus gorgops. This prehistoric giant was one of the largest hippos to have ever existed, thriving across Africa and parts of Europe during the Pliocene and Pleistocene epochs before its extinction around 400,000 years ago. Hippopotamus gorgops was significantly larger than today's common hippopotamus, Hippopotamus amphibious. It stood about 2 meters, 6.6 .6 feet at the shoulder, and reached lengths of up to 5 meters, 16 feet. Its estimated weight ranged from 3,500 to 5,000 kilograms, 7,700 to 11,000 pounds, making it heavier than any living hippo. One of its most distinct features was its raised eye sockets, positioned even higher on its skull than in modern hippos. This adaptation allowed it to see above the waterline while remaining mostly submerged, similar to crocodiles. Like modern hippos, H. gorgops had large, tusk-like incisors and canines, which it likely used for dominance battles and defense against predators. However, its molars were larger and better suited for grinding plant material, suggesting it had an even more herbivorous diet than its modern relatives. Like today's hippos, H. gorgops was semi-aquatic, spending most of its time in rivers, lakes and floodplains. It likely followed a daily routine of resting in water during the day to avoid the heat and grazing on land at night, feeding on grasses, reeds and other vegetation. While little is known about its exact behaviour, it may have lived in small herds or loose groups, similar to modern hippos, with dominant males controlling access to water sources and females. Its enormous size meant that it had few natural predators, but young or sick individuals may have been targeted by ancient crocodiles or large carnivores. Modern hippos are notoriously aggressive, and H. gorgops was likely just as territorial, if not more so, given its larger size and greater strength. Its massive tusks would have made it a deadly opponent in fights, both among its own species and against any predator that got too close. Hippopotamus gorgops disappeared around 400,000 years ago. During the mid-Pleistocene, Africa underwent major climatic shifts, with some regions becoming drier and less suitable for large water-dependent herbivores. Shrinking water sources may have forced H. into harsher environments where it struggled to find food and mates. As environments changed, Hippopotamus amphibious, the smaller and more adaptable modern hippo, began to outcompete H. gorgops. Its smaller size required fewer resources, making it better suited for surviving in increasingly unstable conditions. Dinopithecus ingens. Among the largest monkeys to ever walk the earth was Dinopithecus ingens, a massive baboon-like primate that roamed Africa during the Pliocene and Pleistocene epochs from about 4 million to 400,000 years ago. This powerful monkey was significantly larger than any living baboon, making it one of the most formidable primates of its time. Dinopithecus ingens closely resembled modern baboons, but was much larger and more robust. 
It is estimated to have weighed up to 80 kilograms, 175 pounds, with some individuals possibly exceeding 90 kilograms, 200 pounds. This made it nearly twice as heavy as the largest modern baboons. While exact measurements are unknown, it likely stood over 1.5 meters, 5 feet tall when upright. Like modern baboons, Dinopithecus had a long snout and large canine teeth, which would have been useful for displaying dominance and fighting. Its strong jaw muscles suggest it had a powerful bite. Its long muscular limbs indicate it was a strong climber and an efficient ground dweller, capable of moving between trees and open land with ease. Despite its massive size, Dinopithecus was likely agile, using both its arms and tail for balance while navigating rocky or forested terrain. Dinopithecus engines was highly adaptable, living in grasslands, open woodlands and mountainous regions across Africa. Fossil remains have been found in South Africa, Ethiopia and East Africa, suggesting it had a wide distribution. Dinopithecus was omnivorous, meaning it ate a mix of fruits, leaves, roots, seeds and small animals. It may have scavenged carrion or even hunted small prey, similar to how modern baboons sometimes hunt small antelope or birds. Its large size may even have allowed it to bully top predators such as leopards or cheetahs away from their meals. Its powerful molars suggest it could process tough, fibrous plant material, making it well suited to diverse environments. Given its similarities to modern baboons, Dinopithecus likely lived in large hierarchical troops with dominant males leading the group and protecting it from predators. It may have used loud vocalizations, aggressive displays and physical combat to establish dominance, much like today's baboons. Living in groups would have provided protection against many potential predators. Dinopithecus engines disappeared around 400,000 years ago and several factors likely contributed to its extinction. As the Pleistocene progressed, Africa's climate fluctuated, with some regions becoming drier and less forested. This may have reduced the availability of fruit and other key food sources, forcing Dinopithecus to compete with other herbivores and omnivores. As Dinopithecus declined, smaller, more adaptable baboon species, Papio, began to thrive. These modern baboons required less food, were more agile and could survive in harsher conditions, giving them a survival advantage. Around the same time, early human species like Homo erectus were becoming more widespread and successful. While there is no direct evidence of hunting, early hominins may have competed with Dinopithecus for resources or even hunted them opportunistically. By around 400,000 years ago, Dinopithecus engines had vanished leaving only its smaller, more adaptable relatives, the modern baboons, to carry on their lineage. Africa today is home to some of the world's most impressive wildlife, but as we've seen, it was once ruled by even larger and more formidable creatures. From the towering Paleoloxodon recchi to the massive Hippopotamus gorgops, the ferocious giant short-faced hyena and the powerful Dinopithecus engines, the African Pleistocene was a time of giants, many of which dwarfed their modern relatives. But despite their size and strength, they couldn't escape extinction. Changing climates, competition, and the arrival of new predators, including early humans, all played a role in their downfall. Yet their legacy lives on. Today's elephants, rhinos, lions, and others are the last remnants of an ancient world, reminders of a time when Africa was home to even greater titans. As we look at the wildlife that remains, we must remember that extinction is not just a thing of the past, Many modern species face similar threats from habitat loss and human activity. If history teaches us anything, it's that no species is invincible and the giants of today could become the fossils of tomorrow. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this look into Africa's prehistoric past, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss a new video. Let me know in the comments which extinct African megafauna you find most fascinating. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.